Okay, so we have set it up. So we have a sketch layer that is locked and onion skinned, which means it's set to 50% opacity. And now we can start building vectors on top. So remember, layers are different in Illustrator than they are in Photoshop. I want to use that drop down arrow. And each time I make a new shape, if I use the shape tool here, let's make a rectangle next and drop it in. It adds it to the same layer. Basically, the layers are groups of different vector shapes. But then it will create a separate path underneath. So each of these are called paths. Each layer has a color to it that it will show when you select that path. So my vector paths on top of my sketch are all going to be red. And I can select them a few ways. I can click on the little buttons next to them. Like you see there. I can click on the layer itself. And I can also use the eyeballs to turn things on and off. And I can also lock so I don't accidentally select them once they're finished. The problem with the path color is that that red is not actually in your image. So each of these paths, each of these vectors have their own attributes. And as you can see, the attributes that they have right now are to fill in the shape with white and to outline it with a stroke of black. You can see those attributes in the tool window. Those are the defaults. I want to change those attributes. So if you ever want to delete a path, you can click on the button and then drag it down to the trash. Or you can click on the button and just hit your delete key. Notice that the layer is there because I created it, even if it has no paths in it. So these are organizational tools. That's really all layers are in Illustrator's organizational tools. Now I'm going to set up my shapes. I'm going to draw it. And then before I click off of it, while it's still selected, I'm going to change its attributes. I'm going to change its fill color by double clicking. And I'm going to push that all the way down into the lower left hand corner so it's solid black. Then I'm going to double click on this open box. That's the outline color what's called the stroke. And I'm going to choose a color right now just so you can see. And then I'm going to click off of it with what I call the small selection tool. And now you can see that the red is actually part of the vector shape. All in one shape, you have two attributes. You have a fill and you have a stroke. So what if I don't want a stroke at all? Because I don't want strokes for this. Strokes are weird. They're like uh, typefaces. They are at different point sizes. And that point size stays the same no matter how you scale your, your path. So I don't want the stroke. Instead, I don't want to choose a different color. What I want to do is make sure I have the path selected. You know, that's how I can change color. But what I want to do is actually make it so it's transparent and none. So there is no stroke. And you can see that as the, with the attributes underneath the fill and the stroke. I want to click the stroke, the open window, and click on that none icon. And then there will be no stroke to it, just a fill, and that fill should be black. All right. Now I've got a shape, a shape to start with. That's using shapes. I can then duplicate them, but I can't just use Command J to duplicate. I have to use Command C to copy, and then I have to go up to Edit and Paste in Place. And then it will make an exact duplicate of it in the exact place, and that's very helpful. So now, if I want, I can use the Large Selection tool, the black arrow at the top, and that will give me a transform box for it, a very simple transform box just for rotating and for scale. And then I can start layering these shapes so that they're the basis of my black paper cutout.
Then I can duplicate that, Command C, Edit, Paste in Place. This is all just using the shape tools. Then using the large selection tool, the, the black arrow, what's called the move tool in Photoshop, but works a little bit differently here. I can start building that up. And at any time I can turn off my sketch and see what, sh what my black shapes look like. But you can see how limiting that is. Pretty soon I'm running out of black shapes that are useful. Command C, edit, paste in place, shrink it down. Here, it's gonna distort as soon as you start to move it. If you wanna lock its proportions, you have to hold down shift. So it's the opposite of the new version of Photoshop. But how do I get these more complicated shapes? I need to go away from the basic shape tools. And instead, let me turn that layer off. I don't delete things very often in Illustrator. Instead, I lock them, and then I turn their eyeball off, and then I create a new layer. So I'm going to label that. That's using. Now I'm going to show you an approach for making your black shapes that's very classic, was in the first version of Illustrator many decades ago, which is using the pen tool. The pen tool, you can see, is so important in Illustrator that's right under each of the arrows. What's called the selection tool at the top and then the direct selection tool at the bottom. I kind of call this the big selection tool and the little selection tool. Because this is for selecting whole paths at the top, the black one, and the white arrow is for selecting individual anchor points. To understand what anchor points are, let's use the pen tool. So the pen tool, if you open it up, it has what's called an anchor point tool underneath it. That's for converting anchor points from being straight to being curved. And then underneath that, there's something called the freeform pen tool. But we're just going to use the regular pen tool, and I'm going to show you how it works. We have to kind of test it out first. I want to make an image. So I'm going to click, and that gives me an anchor. And then all of a sudden, I have a straight line coming out from that anchor. So I go to my next point, and because it's not a straight line between those points, I'm going to click and hold, and it's going to give me a curve. And I can drag out that curve. And then my next point is already curved, which is really annoying, but I'm going to go to the next point and then change that curve by how I manipulate it. And it's going to be all weird. And then I'm going to go to the next point, and you can see how crazy and confusing it gets. But ultimately, I just want to end and close the loop. I'll zoom in so you can see this, where I began it. So when I get close to where I started my path with my pen tool, there's going to be a little circle next to the pen tool on the icon, and that means it's going to close the path. So now I have a closed custom path, which has a little loop in it. How does the pen tool work? You now can edit this path and edit these anchors. One way you can edit them is with the anchor point tool, and I can change curves to straights and straights to curves. which can be helpful. I can also use the small selection tool, the, the direct selection tool, the white arrow, to click on anchors and move them around. If I hit delete, or if I hit the pen tool and hit the minus key, it will turn into the delete anchor point tool, which is quite helpful. So you can understand what you're doing, right? So for instance, if I want to get this curve going to this curve using the pin tool, I'm going to use the small selection tool. I'm going to move this anchor to here. And then I'm going to play with these curve handles.
until I can understand the curve. And I can see I have a shape like that, that's separate. So that is why, because the pen tool is so different than usual, that's why I have these slides that will help. So this will go through the major uses of the pen tool and the major shortcuts. So I'll just review those with you. Good, I'm still recording. Want to make sure. <laughs> So clicking, just clicking and moving will give you straight lines. When you're hovering over an anchor point, or if you use the, the minus key on your keyboard, you can delete that anchor point. To select and move a point, to, to change quickly to the direct selection tool, you can hold down the command key, and then you can move that anchor point. To select and move a handle, you can hold down the command key and the pin tool will change to the direct selection tool. And then you can click on the handle, which is not the anchor point, but comes out of the anchor point and just change that side of the curve. You can click and pull the, uh, the handles. These are called Bezier curves to create very custom curves. And then you can also hover over a part of your path that doesn't have an anchor point, and you can add anchor points. You can also use the plus tool to add anchor points. To make handles from a point that has none, you can hold down the option key that will give you the convert anchor point tool, so it changes a straight into a curve. And then to remove handles, you can do the same thing to a curved line, and it will turn it into a straight. And these are what these different icons mean that are next to the pin tool. You want to always close the path. We don't want any open paths here. So with that in mind, let's go back to this shape. And how can I modify it to actually be what I want? Go to the pin tool. If I hover on a part of the path that doesn't have an anchor, I can add an anchor. If I hold down Command, I can get the Direct Selection tool, and I can move that anchor where I want it. But first, I want to play with the handles. So I hold down Command, and I can play with the handles. Both handles, individually. So how do I usually use the pen tool, which I find incredibly frustrating because it keeps creating new paths for me that I don't want. What I do is I don't use curves at the beginning. So if I'm trying to rough out a shape and this design is full of curves, I just plot at the corners and I draw it all with straight polygons. I'm just going to keep it simple by drawing the outside curves right now. I'll just do a segment. This is a pretty complicated thing to trace. And I plot more anchors than I need. This is if I have to use the pen tool. and it gets easier with practice. I make sure that I close the path by ending where I started, so I get the little circle. And then once it's closed, I can modify it. So this is what I have right now. Doesn't look great, looks very hard-edged or <laughs> very straight. So now, if I go to the Convert Anchor Point tool, I can change those to curves just by clicking on them, and I can shortcut that by holding um, Option, 